African-American women in the suffrage movement had to combat the double-edged barrier of race and gender. While the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution was ratified in 1868 during Reconstruction after the Civil War and granted citizenship to former slaves, including equal protection under the law, the right to vote was an empty promise. While African-American men ran for and won office during Reconstruction, their female counterparts were not full participants in American democracy. African-American women in the suffrage movement were not those who were put on a pedestal. They were people like Harriet Tubman, who traveled through swamps and conducted the Underground Railroad to take others to freedom. They were like Mary Church Terrell, who was the first black woman appointed to the District of Columbia Board of Education in 1895, while she fought against segregation in restaurants in the nation's capital. They were like Mary McLeod Bethune, who started a college on a city dump in order to provide education to former slaves. They were like Sojourner Truth, who delivered a speech in 1851 at a women's rights convention in Ohio and said essentially that African-American females performed like men. But ain't I a woman? Sojourner's speech, which I will share with you, captures the conflicting expectations for black womanhood. She said, that man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and to have the best place everywhere. Nobody ever helps me into carriages or over mud puddles or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. Look at my arm. I've plowed and planted and gathered into barns, and no man could head me. And ain't I a woman? I could work as much and eat as much as a man when I could get it and bear the lash as well. And ain't I a woman? I have borne 13 children and seen most all sold off to slavery. And when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. And ain't I a woman? Then they talk about this thing in the head. What's this they call it? Intellect. That's it, honey. What's that got to do with women's rights or Negroes' rights? If my cup won't hold but a pint and yours holds a quart, wouldn't you be mean not to let me have my little half measure full? Then that little man in black there, he says women can't have as much rights as men cause Christ wasn't a woman. Where did your Christ come from? Where did your Christ come from? From God and a woman. Man had nothing to do with him. If the first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone, these women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up again. And now they are asking to do it. The men better let them. Obliged to you for hearing me. And now old sojourner ain't got nothing more to say. Black suffragists were women like Ida B. Wells Barnett, who was in conflict with white women suffragettes who pushed for voting rights for women but would not denounce lynching. During a march to the National American Women's Suffrage Association in Washington, D.C. in 1913, Ida B. Wells was told that the group wanted to keep the delegation entirely white. Ida was asked to march at the end of the parade with her black delegation. Wells moved to the sidelines. And when the marchers passed where she was standing, she stepped into the flow of white marchers and moved forward with them arm in arm. So it's been a complicated journey 
for African Americans to gain access to the polls. We had to surmount the hurdles of poll taxes, literacy tests, and whites-only primaries. Voting rights are privileges we must continue to guard today.